So I was about to start this video by being like, I apologise for the way I look right now because I'm tired and I woke up, it's literally 1 minute to 11, I woke up like half an hour ago. I'm not going to do that because this is not my fault, the way I look. Also, I just have to, to, I'm not even caring at the moment about the whole appearance thing. So I've re ma magically reappeared in my bathroom because I need to come upstairs and get some tissue. Anyway, <laughs> this video is, I guess, another sort of rant while I make tea video. Humans are just completely messing shit up at the moment. It feels sort of like the apocalypse. Um, a lot of people did say that I should have made a video on the EU referendum, and I still may. I was just waiting to see how things um, panned out because my stance was remain obviously because in my opinion that's the only logical situation to be in um because to leave would be particularly detrimental to my age group and it has proven to be detrimental to the economy so i mean if you voted leave then fair enough it's your opinion but i'm inclined to disagree with that viewpoint but anyway, I'm not here to talk about the referendum. I will, yeah, I will probably make another video because it's something I do feel strongly about. I'm very interested in politics and I do try to keep um, knowledgeable about the things that are happening in my country because I feel like too many people don't care what's happening. And I, think, I guess that leads on to the main thing that I'm going to discuss in this video. The thing about the world at the moment is it's very... I don't want to say easy, but I guess it is easy to think be a selfish human um i guess this will touch on some points that i made in my video about humans being inherently selfish um which is not necessarily something i agree with but it's something i like wanted to discuss anyway so i did um but it's very easy to just focus on your problems and the things that directly affect you and if it doesn't directly affect you or even if it does directly affect you but is something big and you feel like your opinion isn't going to be relevant um it's so easy to just be like oh that i don't need to think about that i don't need to get involved in that why am i going to think about something that stresses me out i'm equally guilty of this i mean i feel like i care a lot about a lot of things but i also have a kind of brain that I get really confused easily about how I feel about things. Like at the moment, there's so much stuff um, like going on in my life that I'm really struggling to understand because the way my brain sort of sees things and the way I, I react to things and things that happen to me, I find it really hard to understand and, and work out how I feel about it. And it just ends up makes me feel bad. Like the default is, okay, you feel bad because you can't work out how you feel. You guys can see the fullness of my pineapple hair right now. But the situation is that it's, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm guilty of it as well. I will think, okay, well, let's just, like, I can ignore these big problems that are happening. Okay, yep, there's there's a refugee crisis. Mm, is it directly affecting me? No, it's not. Um, however, if we all feel this way, nothing's ever going to change and nothing's ever going to get done. Um, because we, as, like, a, a body of people, do have a lot of power and we don't use that power effectively. Um, I was walking through London with Becca um, and we saw a bunch of people outside um, a place near Lincoln's Inn Fields and they were protesting, young people probably around my age, my age to like 25-ish, um, protesting to invoke Article 50. Um, that's an EU thing um, which I'm not going to go into a bunch here but even though it was, it's a, it's a pro-Brexit um, movement it's nice to see people actually doing something. They were chanting about democracy, and to be fair, you can't fault what they were asking because the democracy, the way it worked, we as a country decided to leave, even though if we recasted the vote now, it would probably be a different outcome. We should technically be following in this sort of democratic way that we are claiming our country is run, because if we are following the democracy and we are listening to the people, then we would have invoked Article 50, which would begin the formal process of leaving the EU. Um, so my point about this whole thing is even if I don't agree necessarily um, with the, the argument that's being made, it's nice still to see people going out of their way to try and fix something or to try and voice their opinion in a peaceful way, um, in a way that's not going to harm anyone else, but in a way that's going to attempt to make a difference even if the outcome stays the same at least they've tried and moving on from this idea of just using this in regards to politics and in regards to the big issues happening in our world i know i feel like england and america are particularly 
we're particularly stressed at the moment because, I mean, if America votes in Donald Trump as president, I'm not entirely sure how that's going to directly impact me, but it's still something that I am deeply concerned about, even though I'm not from America. And some people will be like, you don't have a right to be concerned about that, but I am concerned about that. This is, it's all part of the things that are happening in a world, in this, in this globe, that I am living in and it's not even about the fact that it would impact me it's the fact that it would impact other humans and despite the fact that I don't know every single inhabitant of America I still care about their well-being because I'm that kind of person I guess but moving on from the political aspects of this there's more close to home I guess in a more personal way um, that we can apply this sort of idea that humans are just really thinking currently of themselves and there are so many ways that we could make the world a better place by not doing that um not only with the political things and by acting on our beliefs or um going out and trying to make differences by using our voices when it comes to our social interactions and our friendships and relationships i feel like our current society and our way of thinking is being fairly detrimental to how we treat relationships and how we deal with them um, because of this somewhat selfish mentality that seems to be happening um, I feel like the lack of compassion we have for people the lack of empathy and sympathy is really is damaging our relationships I I find that I guess this is sort of a continuation of I didn't intend it to be a continuation of the selfishness video but I feel like it's sort of come back around to this um, I guess that's just showing how much of a sort of a prevailing thing it is at the moment um, but because of our our tendency to just sort of care about things that like impact us we can be very blind to what our actions and are doing and how they affect other people i find that the majority of the time when i'm feeling particularly low or if something happens to me that makes me very sad all the people that happen or things that happen to people all around me it's all caused by other people. It's all about, caused by other people and their lack of thinking about what they're saying and what they're doing and how that would negatively impact the person that they're doing that to. And it's just a complete lack of thought going into going into your our actions and their consequences. I guess we've come into this sort of situation where people are reluctant to put themselves in other people's shoes and people are maybe somewhat reluctant even it's not a conscious thing i feel like it's a subconscious thing that's happening in that people feel um like they just don't think about the consequences of things anymore we're in a you know i hate to use the term yolo but i will in this situation because we've sort of come to believe that it's sort of our actions aren't really like that I don't know I don't even know how to phrase it but I feel like a lot of the time we just say fuck it and do things that perhaps we shouldn't be doing I'm all for saying fuck it and doing amazing and incredible and adventurous things I try to do that as much as I can don't think about the consequences go ahead and do something because it will usually turn out great however when it comes to personal relationships I find myself particularly conscious of the things I say to people and the way I treat people because I would hate to think, and I know I've probably done it, I know I've probably upset and hurt so many people in my life without even realising it, but I try my best to think so carefully about what I'm doing and will this have a negative impact on someone because I guess, I mean, I guess I'm kind of of a sensitive disposition as it is. Um, it's fairly easy to upset me, probably. I mean, it's not something I'm particularly proud of and I wish it wasn't that way. But because of my sort of instability in a lot of things, um, someone could say something and completely not mean it in a bad way at all. And I will think about it for weeks and be and have it really, really affect my mood. Um, and I really, and I wish it wasn't that way. But because of this, I'm now particularly like whenever I have an interaction with any other human I want to come out of that interaction knowing that I made them a little bit happier or I kept them on the same sort of neutral ground I don't want to ever have like detrimentally affected someone's like in a negative way I guess and I just remembered like kind of what I wanted to make a video about before I started making this video so I feel like if I can condense it enough I'm just going to merge the two um because I guess they link on fairly nicely all of this being said, it may have sounded from me like it was coming across as a bit of an attack on our generation, but it's 100% not. Um, with all of this, this is happening uh, throughout the whole of 
everyone that's living here whether you whether they are like 90 years old or like 12 it it's a universal problem i think um and yeah so the the situation is uh, that i wanted to discuss was the kind of uh, the idea that our generation are stupid and the idea, idea that our generation aren't thinking about things and I, maybe that's contradicting what I've already said but um, I get very upset when I have uh, the older generation of people uh, they seem to have a real vendetta against my generation particularly and I find it upsetting because they think that uh, like despite everything I said before about the lack of thought going into relationships and and the problems in our like sort of social um, environment i don't think they're generation specific i think that's and i don't i don't necessarily think it's a new thing um i guess i feel like it maybe has gotten worse recently but i don't think it's a uh something that's been caused specifically by technology or any of the other things that the uh, the older generation tend to blame for our ignorance or stupidity um or whatever it, it else is that they're they're gonna be having go at us for i feel like our generation is some of the most informed and well educated in impossibly like the the history of, of humans we have so many open resources to us with the with the founding of the internet and with smartphones we have so much information at our fingertips and if we want to use it we can um i see that maybe the old like the older generation are, are thinking well they have they they're not utilizing their new technology or maybe the older generation aren't this is a generalization i'm not saying all of the older generation are saying this but uh, a lot of them are saying that uh, that, that we you, you know we've all heard it we've all hold, heard old people complaining about our damn phones and and how we've all just got our head in social media and so we don't um, we're not embracing real world problems but i the most intelligent conversations that i've had about the eu referendum about politics in america um about the refugee crisis half of those conversations that i've had that i've had the most insightful and inspiring conversations have been in the smoking gardens at clubs when everyone's been drinking a little bit and we sit down and we have a nice talk about the situations and everyone has an opinion on it and whether i agree with their opinions or not it's something that people know about we we have tried to educate ourselves on these things and i think it's like a general idea that our generation is so wrapped up in social media and so wrapped up in um in celebrity culture that we don't care about politics and i find it an absolutely incredulous thing to try and wrap my head around the fact that they could assume that a whole generation is like this um there's a sense of entitlement with the older generation i find when i get on trains or whatever um if there's um a sort of elderly person behind me i mean usually i'd just say just go ahead but if i did get on the train if we were queuing there was a particular time that stood out to me uh, there was like a it was a really busy train um there was a queue to get on everyone was in single file i walked on the lady said to her friend behind me they must have been around 60 years old 55 60 and they were like oh the youths of today like well, that would never have happened in my day we'd always have been allowed to go on before um like a young person and i i just sort of turned around and looked at them but i didn't really know what to say because i my first thought being me would have been to apologize and say i'm so sorry do you want to go ahead but i was also like but why we're all in the same situation here uh why should age pay play any part here i've been traveling for four and a half hours um i'm tired too we all want to get on this train we all want to go home if we start messing with this queue system that's going on it's just going to delay things i didn't understand why they felt entitled to be uh any more important than i was as a person um and again this happened i was boarding a coach when i was going to manchester and we'd all formed a queue as you do because we're queuers here and um and we were getting on and this lady sort of edged her way around me with her little like trolley and she had those a couple of her friends and i sort of like looked at them and a guy behind me thankfully turned around and was like you know there's a queue here and they were like they and the ladies looked kind of shocked to be called out on the fact that they were trying to actively jump the queue because i was a young person and um and I, I, while i didn't say anything at the time because i still feel uh, like a bit nervous about doing that sort of thing um, I was thankful that the guy behind me was able to felt that he was able to call out the people for saying it because a lot of the time uh, elderly people can sort of get away with stuff because no one really wants to call them out on stuff um, but yeah I guess that was kind of a tangent but kind of relevant to what I'm saying here um, in that it's really just assumed that like we don't that like they would never have done that to me if I was a person their age or even a middle-aged person it just because I look like a child you know I have my hair in plaits massive rucksack on I was wearing like probably just my the floral trousers I was look look particularly young I did, definitely didn't even look 18 um 
they feel like they have that sort of authority over me and that they can go and do that which I just think is an interesting and also particularly uh, strange. Probably going to be quite a long video so bear with me. Um, I feel like there's a sort of expectation that we're supposed to have respect for adults. Um, there's, well, there's definitely an expectation that we're supposed to respect um, adults without any particular reason. If an adult is rude to me, I mean, I will automatically try and respect every single person that I see because if you want respect back, you should show them respect first and then it's like a mutual thing. I feel like that's standard, that's how it works. Um, and I'm happy with that situation, that seems fair to me. Um, but when I'm given no reason to respect a person um, and it's still expected of me, uh, I don't necessarily think, I mean, I will always try and be um, civil and nice, even if someone's done something to upset me, I'm the biggest conflict avoider I know. I don't like conflict, um, especially in personal relationships. If someone does something to upset me, usually I'll stay quiet about it. But even though I know that's probably not the best way to go about it, I should be able to call people out if something has hurt me because we should be able to have these conversations with the people we love. We should be able to have um, that openness in order to call someone out and say, no, look, this actually really upset me. Perhaps if we did call people out, it would change and whatnot. Um, so it's an interesting concept um, and it's an interesting thing to try to like sort of understand but um, I just feel like the generation above us has yeah I've, I've noticed it so much just with this whole EU referendum and with all of the politics going on in America and even with the refugee crisis um, elder or more older members of my family even um, have been I remember when it was the general election elections here in the UK I was supporting Labour but at the time I wasn't old enough to vote so I couldn't vote. My family are a conservative family so there was conflict amongst my family because I felt that Labour for our family's um, working class status were better and by researching and knowing a lot about the Conservative Party I didn't feel that they were for us. I didn't feel like they were going to be beneficial to us at all and as a student I felt Labour were just completely um, more up my street um, and they were more they had more um, sort of ideas um, that were going to benefit me as a person. Um, but when I voiced these opinions, um, I was com I, I felt even less educated members of sort of my adult family um, were were saying that I was uneducated for the for the uh, for the for the points that I was bringing up in support of my viewpoint, um, and just because they and they they would. I found a lot of people use the argument, you're a child, you don't know what you're talking about, I'm an adult, I've lived on this earth however many X amount of years longer than you, I know what I'm talking about. And I would like to call bullshit on that because age means literally nothing. I have sat for hours, I know about the politics of this country, it's something that I'm deeply interested in. I, so many of my friends study politics as a subject and they know more than I'd say the majority of the average ad adult that's not involved in politics. I know for a fact that the, the family members and people that I, w I was having this debate with I knew, like, they didn't know the same stuff that I knew and it was infuriating that they were thinking that their age meant that they were more intelligent or that they had more knowledge on this subject than I did because at the time I was just 17, um, I was technically a child, um, I needed to just get back into into whatever it was that children are supposed to be doing. It's just infuriating for me that, that, that this whole age thing, it just age does not equal knowledge, like, it just doesn't. I feel like... I'm part of a generation of people where we have so many resources at our fingertips. Yes, because of this growing population, we have an even more diverse uh, like group of people my age. Some people will not care at all. Some people, uh, I have an older brother who's 26, he didn't vote, he doesn't care about any of that. When I tried to bring up uh, the referendum and have a a conversation about it, ask him who he was voting for, he said, I don't care, he said they're all, like, he, because some people just don't, some people just don't care about, uh, about the country, they, uh, some people live an insular life, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing necessarily, I mean, I guess, I, in my opinion, I think it is kind of a bad thing, I feel like we should all care about this world that we're living in, but that's just because that's how I feel, um, I feel like, I mean, if you do have a lot of stuff going on in your life that's personal or, or, or whatever, it can be a lot, it can be a bit too much to think about the whole world and maybe that's why I do struggle with understanding things and that's why I struggle with um, like sort of emotions and things sometimes because I do think about everything too much possibly but um, 
at least I, I feel like at least I care like at least I will like one day I hope I can make some sort of difference to 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 the to the world and try I want everything even if it's just every single person I meet I just want to leave some sort of positive legacy and the using the word legacy sort of insinuates I want to do it for myself and I guess I partly do want to do it for myself because it feels good to leave people feeling good like this is what I talked about in my um, in my in my selfishness video. Every good deed we do um, has positive repercussions for us as well. So I like it's difficult to know. Do I want to do it for myself or do I want to do it for the people that I would like to help? But I would like to do it for the people I like to help as well. It's not just a I want to do this because it'll make me look real good. It's because I genuinely care about everyone. I feel like everyone deserves to have someone. Like I feel like everyone deserves chances and equal opportunities. That's just my viewpoints. This is exhausting to talk about and it's frazzling my brain. Point is, <laughs> this has just been the most ridiculous video, but um, my point is overall with this entire thing, I don't even know what I started this video talking about. The facts are, well, my opinions on these situations are um, that we, A, should not be completely entitled to respect adults if they do not show respect to us, B, I don't even know if I started with one or two, or but I've gone to B. B, we, just because someone is older than us does not mean that they have more knowledge or that they are in a better position to make political judgments than we are. Um, as a generation of people with access to so much knowledge, and there is a percentage of this generation that will use that knowledge and that will use our resources to find things out. Um, so therefore, they cannot say that our generation are just brainless people that are obsessed with celebrity culture and social media because while we do enjoy celebrity culture and social media, I enjoy social media a lot. I spend a lot of my time on it, but social media teaches me things. I learn a lot of, I go on Twitter and I can engage in political conversation with it. It's not a bad thing, so they need to stop treating us like it's a bad thing to be on social media all the time. Celebrity culture, it's one of those things. People enjoy it, light entertainment in this world that is completely fucked up 99% of the time. We need some light relief to stop just shaming us for enjoying it. Like, I don't watch Love Island. Everyone else in the UK seems to watch it. I feel like it's trash, but I'm not gonna judge everyone for watching it because if you wanna watch a program like that, then go for it. It's, what's to, who's to say that that is any less just distracting and entertaining than watching any of the other things that we watch on TV. So stop using these arguments to say that we're dumb or that we are not educated just because we enjoy things that don't take masses of thought. We can enjoy things that don't take masses of thought and we can also enjoy thinking about serious issues and thinking about thinking. So that argument is just irrelevant and needs to just walk out the door. Don't turn around now because you're not welcome anymore. Three. C. I don't know what my, th what my what was my third point. Human relationships. Think about what you're saying to people, 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 people. I've said it too many times. Treat every single person how you wish to be treated. It's a standard. We're taught this from a very young age. I went to a Catholic primary school. It was all uh, they were all about that life, all about treating people in this good way. If you treat someone like shit and they treat you like shit back. Bitch, don't complain, because you started this cycle. I mean, some people will treat you like shit no matter what, how you act to them. Some people do that because some people are just, are just that way, and I wish they weren't, but they are. But if you treat everyone nicely, and if you really think about the consequences of your actions, sometimes it can be detrimental. Sometimes it will make you uh, stumble when you come to make decisions. I'm a bad decision maker. I'm a terrible decision maker. You ask me where I want to go to eat, I will not be able to tell you where I want to go and eat because it's a decision that I'm not in a, I can't make, can't make these decisions. But by thinking about the consequences of things, yes, it can be stressful and makes decision making hard. But you could, when it comes to like, oh, am I going to yell abuse at this person because I dislike their shoes in the street? Consequences of this, are you going to benefit positively from it? The answer to that question is no. How could possibly yelling at someone for their shoes in the street that you do not know, how could that possibly benefit you positively? No. What are the consequences of that? That person will be like, well, shit, someone didn't like my shoes and it can make them very uncomfortable. And if they're a person who are like me, who's had this happen to them before, you would then be walking around the rest of the day like, my shoes. I'm questioning my decisions of these shoes and now I feel like they must be awful because some random in the street felt necessary and they felt that they deemed it like their responsibility to yell at me about these shoes. <laughs>
when it's people, not just strangers, people that you love, just because you love them and they love you, even if they're your family, you feel like, oh, okay, well, they're obligated to love me, are they, if I mess up, that, they'll still be there. While that is essentially true for a lot of people, and I know it's true for me, I could mess up a million times and my mum would still be like, come into my bed for a cuddle, Laura, let's, let's just forget about this. Um, she, like, you know, unconditional love, whatever. Not everyone is lucky enough to have this, but also if you are, don't take it for granted. Your friends could walk out and leave anytime they want. I am particularly conscious of this fact. I rely on my friends. Like, without my friends, I would not be alive. I rely, Ella and Becca and Lauren, they are the most important people in my life. I will start crying if I talk about them anymore, okay? They are so important to me that every time I do something that upsets them, I feel terrible about it for weeks and months and years because I, every single thing that happens between us or happens between me and other friends, I try to make sure that I treat the situation how I would want to be treated if the situation was flipped because it's so important. People don't have to stay in your life. People leave all the goddamn time. That's what people do because people are unreliable the majority of the time and people will disappoint you. That seemed very negative and it's very negative for me to say that but this is the facts of life, people. However, if you treat people nicely and you're good to people and you make people feel good, the majority of the time, well, okay, a percentage of the time, they want to stay. They might still leave. All of your efforts might be for naught, but at least you tried. Because I've had it before where I've put so much effort into a friendship, I do my best, I feel like I can't do anything more, and they still leave. That's... It's really shit because you're like, what did I do wrong? You know, it wasn't your fault. It was not your fault. It's that person's fault. It's their loss. They walk out on someone that cared about them a lot. That's their problem, not your problem. So you just need to just still don't let things like that affect how you treat people. Just still like let still allow yourself to love people and allow yourself to open up and treat people in a good and positive way because yes, they might still leave, but at least like yeah they may have that may really negatively impact you for a little while but at least you didn't contribute to that you can say no i did my best that was their problem that was not my problem even if they try and flip it to make it your problem it was not your problem i promise it was not your fault because you did everything that you could do so it's fine just it's fine i've no idea what clips that i filmed i'm gonna make it into this video so i found it hard to generalize and do some sort of conclusion but i feel like that just yelling it's a nice release. I've been feeling really weird the last couple of days, um, and so it's good to just sort of get everything off my chest. Um, I'm going to close this with a positive message for you all, because I think I need it as well. I need to encourage myself. It's a good life. I feel like I can't even say that with confidence. Okay. <laughs> Majority of the time, for so many of us, I'm in, I'm in a massive position of privilege in this current world. I'm aware of that fact. I know that I am a really lucky, goddamn lucky person. That I'm able to do the things I can do, that I'm able to live in a safe environment. So for me, it is a good life. And I really hope we get to a point where at, at least the majority of people it's a good life because there is so much to see and do and there are so many th there are so many opportunities that we have in this world and i feel obligated with my with my position in society i feel obligated to be able to take all of these opportunities because there are so many people that deserve them probably more than i do um and that would use them better than i ever could that they won't get them because they're not in this position and so I feel it's my responsibility to do the best I can with the life I've been given. Um, and no matter what situation you're in at the moment, you're a human, you're breathing, you're alive. And you might be going through the most terrible thing imaginable. You may be experiencing things that I could never in my wildest dreams ever think of experiencing. And so I will never be able to put myself in your shoes. I will never be able to fully empathise and understand your situation. So you might get frustrated when I tell you just go and do things. Or just, uh, just you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you to be happy. Because you doesn't doesn't work like that. Happiness doesn't work that way. What I've learned recently is every single time I would throw coins into wishing wells or every 11-11, I would wish to be happy. Happy isn't a permanent state. You cannot be happy forever. If we were all happy forever, I don't even know if we'd appreciate happiness anymore. Um, and 
I feel like it's so important to understand that it's okay to feel sad and it's okay to feel upset about things and uh, linking this sort of back to the one consistent thing in my life that I rely on to keep me in a mentally safe place, Harry Potter, it's like with the Dementor, when you are getting attacked by a Dementor, all you can think of are the sadness and everything, you're so consumed by the emptiness and the sadness and everything that's happening in your life, a complete and utter depression. And the only way to combat a Dementor is to relive your happiest moments. I find reliving happy moments particularly painful if I am in a really uh, low state. And I find it really difficult to relieve those memories because it makes me somewhat sadder that I'm now feeling this way. However, I've worked out that by acknowledging those memories, by saying there are time that happened in my life um, and I felt that way at that time. And also thinking, but before that time, I also felt like this. That gives me the hope and the courage I need to be able to go on and think, well, I'm going to feel that happy again at some point. Something that I absolutely live by, I swear by, is the fact that this life is full of terrible and amazing things that we cannot even imagine yet. The things that will happen to us, we have no idea, but they will be horrific and they will also be incredible. And that gives me the stability in my brain to keep going because I know that despite the fact that I will probably feel worse than this at some point, and I will probably experience complete and utter sadness and hopelessness. I will also experience extreme happiness and contentment and I will go on and have amazing memories and I will live out amazing things. And that is enough to keep me going through the bad stuff. So while this video has turned into a somewhat, I feel like I always end up in this place where I'm sort of trying to give everyone, I'm um, and give myself <laughs> reassurance that things are gonna be okay. Um, I, but I think that's just what I need at the moment. Um, got a big summer ahead of me. I've already done some of the things that I planned on doing and they were great. Um, so I hope you all have like amazing summers and I hope this video was not, I mean this video is probably, I've probably filmed about 40 minutes worth of ranting here so who the hell knows what's going to make it in. Um, but I feel like it was important for me to say and um, I hope that it was somewhat informative, like I don't know if it's going to be informative but like I guess I just want to make you think, like enjoy doing that, like giving people a different viewpoint on things. So if I've done that, then excellent. That was what I set out to do. Um, but anyway, thank you. So um, there's a lot of new subscribers on this channel since um, my collabs with Vigard um, over at Wise Hufflepuff's channel. Um, and so if you're new around here, hi, I do this sort of thing sometimes um, where I'll just go off and rant for a little while. While the majority of my videos are Harry Potter themed, I do enjoy using this channel as an outlet for me and as a way to just post whatever's happening in my life and um, talk about things I think need to be discussed. I have a platform where I have over 7,000 people now that uh, subscribe to me and I find that, um, I find that because I'm in that position now and because I get like 1,000 plus views on these talking videos, um, I feel like that's something I should be discussing these big issues with you guys because I'm, I've been given a platform um, to voice my opinions and so I should utilise it to, to, vo to voice, talk about important things. Um, just quickly I wanted to mention, um, my name's Che vote, did a video uh, a couple, like last week or something, um, like sort of saying that YouTubers needed to uh, start using their platforms to talk and I couldn't agree more. Um, there's been a lot of terrible things happening at the moment. I didn't really touch on uh, the whole Dallas situation and the um, police uh, situations over in America because I don't know enough about it to, to write or to make a comprehensive video about it. Um, it's something that I do need to look into more and do need to research. Uh, that's one thing I, I refuse to talk about things on this channel that I don't have enough knowledge about to formulate an opinion and to also be able to give you guys the the actual situation i don't want to be uh saying stuff that's untrue and i also don't want to be um talking about things that i don't understand because i'm not going to be able to present it in a way that's understandable if i don't understand it myself um so yeah that's why i haven't really touched on that in this video but just because i purely don't have the knowledge i think i need to be able to make a comprehensive thing about it um but yes anyway i hope i'm gonna stop talking now um i hope this was somewhat informative and also um 
just briefly I'll mention the Just Giving page for my um, charity concert that I'm doing this Saturday is still open so if you can make any donations it goes to an amazing charity Roses Rainbow Fund they provide music therapy for children, sick children in hospital and support for the families and their work they do is incredible I've seen it firsthand when I was in their, in their um, touring choir for like five years um, and so I was thrilled I was able to put together this concert on Saturday for them um, to try and make a bit of money we've already made some on the GoFundMe page if you have um, already um, donated thank you so much that means a lot to me um i was so surprised that anyone even sort of like came from from the from my like from youtube and donated it meant a great deal amount to me so thank you so much uh, if you have already donated um and thank you for all of the kind words i've received on social media about it um that's amazing um and hopefully this saturday will be good and if you can make it then fantastic if you can't no problem um i will be vlogging and um i should i think i'll be posting the entire concert on my youtube channel if i can do that um then i'm pretty sure i'll be doing that or at least uh, the occasional song or two so yes watch out for that and thank you so much for sticking by me and um thank you to the new subscribers and hopefully i can keep making these videos for a long time i think i'll probably do a q a next so if you um have any questions drop them in the comments or go on my instagram and i'll probably post a photo on my instagram for you guys to comment on as well um but yes thank you so much for your support um it means a lot to me and i'm gonna go finish my tea because it's but it's a bit cold now um but yes okay thank you so much